Praise the Lord, everyone. It is good to see all of you on Wednesday night. It is an opportunity again in the middle of the week to gather together to worship the Lord and to hear what the Lord would say to us. Amen. For those of you joining with us now live online, Facebook, welcome. We are at 540 South Main, the metropolis of Clute, Texas. So come on down and check us out. If you live in the area, obviously you're welcome to visit with us on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock, Wednesday night Bible studies at 7, and then we have care groups around this Clute Lake Jackson uh, during the week, and so we would be happy to connect you with those as well. Amen. So we give honor to Bishop and Sister Smith tonight, ministering online. We thank God for them. Amen. Man, thank God for a godly spiritual leader, a covering for us. Amen. And we believe in supernatural, divine, God-given authority. And authority always comes down. And so we thank God for our spiritual head. Amen. So tonight as we get ready to move into the service, we want to pray, obviously, to begin with. And I trust that at some point during your day, you have found some time to be alone with the Lord, perhaps walking with him throughout the day. That's always the, the plan. Sometimes life gets in the way and we get off track. Amen. Um, personally, I won't divulge all of my emotions today, but I, I, I hit a wall this afternoon and... Um, you know, it was, um, <laughs> but mentally and emotionally, I hit a wall this afternoon, and so um, I, I needed a little encouragement from the Lord, and what did I get from him was um, that right there, <laughs> crickets. He didn't have to say anything. I knew what I needed to do. And so I got with him, and we got it all worked out. Amen. But there are days like that. And he knows our frame very well. The psalmist said he knows our frame, and he remembers that we are dust. He made us, so obviously he knows all about us, and we are made out of the material that's that's very fragile, it's very easily um, offended and upset and gets twisted sometimes with God and his word, but he knows all of that and he has provided everything we need to help us all the way through to eternity, amen. So would you stand with me right now, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Um, there is a special request that I would make you aware of. There, there, a former pastor of this assembly was tragically, well, he passed away from injuries sustained in a vehicle accident, and uh, we want to pray for this family. Um, you may have already heard or seen something about this, but we want to pray for this family. If you do not know, you can ask me afterward. But we want to pray for this family that God would intervene for them. There are children. Um, they're, the three that I'm aware of are they're adults, but still they lost their father. So we want to pray for the will of God to be done for them and for the whole entire family, his extended family as well. And we want to continue praying for Sister Jean recovering from shoulder replacement for Momsy uh, in rehab from the hip thing. And I'm sure there's a number of other requests tonight. If you, have, you know one, just raise your hand. The Lord is very able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think. Would you pray with me right now? Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we recognize your presence already. There is an abiding presence of God in this room. And we receive what you have come to say and do. So right now, Lord, we speak the word of faith over these requests, the families, the people involved in this tragedy. We pray the comfort and strength of the Lord to be all around them. 
But Lord, the Bible tells us that underneath are the everlasting arms of the Lord. And so, Lord, lift this family and bring everything that they need, the encouragement, the strength, even the, the courage, Lord, to see this thing through. God, we pray for Sister Jean for complete recovery with the shoulder and mom with the, the hip, Lord. We and all the other needs that were mentioned, hands that were raised, we believe in your power to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. And so in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we speak in faith now, let it be so, according to your word. And in this room, Lord, as the word goes forth and, and those watching with us online wherever they are we believe father now that as that word is going out it's a sharp two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit of the joints and the marrow is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart that this word, O oh Lord, indeed will have its perfect work. But Lord, that spirit of the word as well, that when the conviction comes, Lord, that we'll be stirred to repentance, that when the, the word is brought and there's encouragement and there's strength, Lord, that we won't just shake it off and say it's for somebody else, but we'll We'll hear it, we'll receive it, we'll accept it as coming from our Father. And God, we give all of the glory, the honor, the praise. It belongs to you. We say with our voice, hallelujah. Thank you, Master, for who and what you are. We glorify the name above all names, for you are worthy. For you are worthy, for you are worthy, for you are worthy. Blessed be the name of the Lord in Jesus' name. Come on, let's do that a moment here. He's worthy of all acceptation and praise. He's worthy tonight to be adored, for someone to lift up his name when it's not being used in vain. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus, excellent in all of your ways, even past finding out. Blessed be his name forever in Jesus' name. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 In case you uh, are not aware of the schedule, um, Dr. Hughes was originally scheduled to be here tonight, and he asked if he could delay this last Wednesday to the first Wednesday of September. He had something else that was uh, up against that, and so we agreed. Obviously, uh, it was fine to, for Brother Barber to minister tonight. And then we'll again join back up here next Wednesday one more time in this summer revival series. And Dr. Hughes will be back, I'm sure, continuing the series on forgiveness. Amen. I don't know about you, but that, that, the, those messages on forgiveness have changed my life. Amen. It has freed me. It has freed me. Amen. Brother Barber, I want you to come and minister the word of the Lord. Oh, by the way, I'm supposed to let you know about this. There was originally scheduled to be a, um, a potluck dinner this Sunday uh, that is going to be rescheduled. So in case you got a notice on that, it's going to be rescheduled. Uh, just stay tuned. Uh, it will be um, later, maybe a month down the road. We'll see how it goes. But um, th that's been rescheduled. Amen. God bless you. Brother Barber. Minister the word of the Lord in Jesus' name. Praise God. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord. It is. Pray Thank you. <laughs> Praise God. You may be seated. Um, this was um, something that whenever Sister Smith, whenever she, uh, she sent a text to me, before we had the Thursday and Friday night prayer meeting, and she just, she sent a text, she just asked if I would be available if, if called upon. I'm sure some other people in here got the same text about to, if we got, you got called upon during the prayer meeting, would you, would you, would it be okay with you, would you be available? So, and I was, of course, I was like, yes, I'd be available. And so, I don't know how long it was after that to where the word watchtower jumped into my spirit. I'm not even going to say mind, I'm just going to say spirit. 
the word dropped, the Lord dropped the watch, watchtower into my spirit. So, so of course we come in here Thursday and, you know, I'm just like, okay, you know, cause you know how when you're, you have that expectation, just the expectation of the, the whole thing, everything that was taking place. First of all that, and then I was like, okay, you know, you, as you know that you might get called to ask to do, be, be a part of something, then, of course, you're sitting back there like, okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> you're trying to feel things, you know, you're trying to make sure you're focused on the Lord and not trying to be focused on those things, and I don't know how many times I had to cast my care, okay, <laughs> I'm just being honest, just being transparent, if I'll just say that instead, because I hope I'm honest every time I talk to you, <laughs> but... And so whenever it came up to where it was um, the prodigals, we were going to start praying for the prodigals. And I was like, okay, that's, uh, I feel like this is where I'm going to, and then, you know, somebody else came up and prayed. I'm like, okay, Lord, I, I felt that was me, but that's okay. I'm good with whoever wants to go up there. I'm good with everything that we're, that's taking place here. I was just, I just want to be a part of it yeah. in any way. Um, and so... Of course, we went through Thursday night and then Friday night again, you know, and I'm like, okay, I thought for sure, I, I just, I don't know, did you ever feel like you, that you almost had a, a surety that you were going to just be a part of something? I, even though just being here, we were a part of things, but you know what I'm saying. Right. And then Friday night came and gone, and so I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm like, so, and he was, he just kept sharing different things, just little nuggets of things until just last night even where, um, and I don't have a lot of stuff, most of this stuff on the paper, thank God Bree was here to help, she printed this up for me, and thanks, thank you Sandra, Sister Sandra, for being willing to hop along back there and try to help me to get the, uh, the printer going, <laughs> thank you, I really appreciate that, um, yeah, one, the one time I go to print something back here, and for my phone, and it doesn't work, and we were already running late, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> Just whatever um, could go wrong, I guess, or kind of slip us up to try to get us off course. But you know what? His grace is sufficient. Amen. His grace is sufficient, and um, his peace surpasses all understanding. And I'm grateful for that. So I guess tonight, if, we, if I would just talk a little bit, we're, I just um, I think it's going to go on the Facebook page is Get to the Watchtower. And um, so I'm going to read, let me get out my little grandpa glasses here. <laughs> I thought Bree said something. Um, I'm going to read Isaiah 21, 1 through 10, but I'm, you can stay seated too. I'm going to, once again, I'm going to read from the Amplified. Um, so if you have your electronic device, it might be better to try to pull it up on your blue letter Bible or something like that. Or if you have the Amplified Bible with you. But like I said, Isaiah 21 1 through 10 in the Amplified, it says, The mournful inspired oracle, a burden to be carried concerning the desert of the sea, the seasonally flooded plains just south of Babylon. As windstorms in the Negev sweep through, so it, God's judgment comes from the desert, from the hostile armies of a terrifying land. A harsh vision has been shown to me. The treacherous Treacherous one deals treacherously, and the destroyer destroys. Go up, Elam, lay siege, Media, or Media, all the groaning caused by Babylon's ruthless oppressions. I, the Lord, have brought to an end. So the Lord's saying right there, I, I've brought all the groaning of Babylon's ruthless oppressions to an end. Therefore, continues Isaiah, my loins are filled with anguish. Pains have seized me like the pains of a woman in childbirth. I am so bent and bewildered that I cannot hear. I am so terrified that I cannot see. My mind reels. Horror overwhelms me. Anybody intercessors in here? Anybody ever feel, feel like this in prayer at times? You felt like you've been bent over and in anguish and overtaken by pain? Pain like the woman in childbirth, travail, um, that prayer to where you're not even, you're not saying words in English and you're not even really praying in tongues. You're just kind of moaning and groaning. You just can't, 
you know, you're just making, the, you're letting the Lord make those noises through you, just letting him make that intercession through you, where you're, at times where you're feeling, sometimes I feel like when I'm in prayer to where I'm in, in the flow of the Spirit to where I'm, it's almost like twofold. Um, I have the somebody else. I got something feeling the feelings of somebody else, or or a nation, or a people, or or whatever whatever the situation might be. But also, I feel like there's maybe something within me to where like God's touching both things. He's working on both ends. He's and God can do that. How many times we're in, in intercessory prayer, or we're 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 in that moaning or the groaning that God is doing something for somebody else. We might be praying for a missionary in another land or whatnot, and to where God takes us into the supernatural and we begin to, to speak in tongues and have spiritual warfare, but all of a sudden I feel, okay, the Lord, you're doing something as well for me too in this. Okay, I can see once again it's Bobblehead Wednesday night. I like that. It's, it's good to have Bobblehead Wednesday night on a Wednesday night, you know, in the church house. <laughs> You get out of work and we're just hurry up and rush home to get dinner sometimes and you forget about Wednesday night prayer and you're like, oh my Lord, <laughs> to, the, to the watchtower. Um, so he said, I'm so terrified that I cannot see. My mind reels, horror overwhelms me. The twilight I long for has been turned into fear and trembling for me. They set the table for the, the doomed banquet. They spread out the cloth. They eat, they drink. Rise up, captains of... Captain, captains of Belshazzar's court, oil your shields for battle, for your enemy is at the gates. This is what the Lord says to me. Go station the lookout. Let, them, let him report what he sees. When he sees a chariot, horsemen in pairs, a train of donkeys and a train of camels, let him pay attention and listen closely, very closely. And the lookout called like a lion. O oh Lord, I stand continually on the watchtower by day, and I am stationed every night at my guard post. Now look, here comes a troop of, ra of, ra of riders, horsemen in pairs. And so like I said, this was the, that was the word, that, uh, just the word, watchtowers. And so a lot of times for me, I don't know how the Lord deals with you about how he wants you to study things and start looking things up and getting into things or what you're supposed to teach about, talk about, pray about, speak about, whatever it might be. A lot of times for me, it's just one word. He just, get, he just drops a word there and then he's like, takes off the leash and he's like, go ahead and go, go find and go dig and and, and then as, I'm, you know, as we're digging and we're searching for different things, as we're trying to gain some more knowledge of things, and he'll just start dropping these little nuggets and stuff. And sometimes, I don't know, you could even, my wife could even say, I, I was sitting there at times going, I just, Lord, I don't know. I don't know what you're trying to say. I don't know what you're trying to do. I, I don't, you know, I don't. I don't know. He knows. I don't know. And so there's times like that when you're just like, okay, Lord, I don't know what you're trying to say. Does the Lord ever just give you a scripture? Just lead you to something or you just feel, feel something. And you're just like, you just don't know what to do with it. And we just, just sit in there, you, ever, you rack your brain like I do. You just, you try to just go and tr you're, turning, you're doing all this and that. You're trying, you got 58 uh, windows open. <laughs> Some of them are the same. You realize you look going, well, that's the same one over here. And you got five of the same ones open. And you're like, oh, my Lord, help me. Okay, I'm, thank God it's, we're all in agreement. We're all in one mind and one accord on, on a couple things. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you just got to throw up your hands and say, you know what, Lord? I don't know what you're trying to say here. I don't know what you're trying to do here. And we just throw our hands up and we just surrender and say, Lord, I just, I just want to be a conduit. I just want to be an open vessel. I just want to get into the flow and the movement of your spirit. I don't want to say anything more or anything less. I don't want to have any, un I don't want to have a thought that isn't of you right now, Lord. I don't want to go in any direction that is not of you. And so, like I said, it was just that one word. It was that watchtower. And did I finish reading? See, this thing, that printer messed up my notes. It kind of cut things off in weird places. Um... Yes, because I'm missing a whole another. 
part of the scripture. Let me finish it. Um, it says, And one said, Fallen, fallen is Babylon, and all the carved images of her gods are shattered on the ground. O oh, my threshed people, Judah, who must be judged and trampled down by Babylon, my afflicted of the thresh, threshing floor, what I have heard from the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have joyfully announced to you that Bible, Babylon is to fall. So, you know, I'm not declaring to be any kind of, uh, you know, revelation. That's one that uh, I know Bishop Wright talked about it on when he was doing pause out in California and talking about how some of us kind of push off revelation because we're just kind of like, it's just so tricky. <laughs> I think I'm kind of somewhat in that boat a little bit. It's just, I don't know if you have problems with revelation. I have a little bit of difficulty with it. Um, and so, like I said, when Watchtower and Babylon and, and the, this, this prophet Isaiah was having this vision, okay, to where he, he is, um, he's in, seeing himself in a couple different ways from a couple different views, a couple different perspectives here. He's seeing himself as he's one of the exiles, one of the children of Israel that's been exiled to Babylon, okay? It's where the Lord's given him this vision, and he's seeing it as, as one of these children. He's seeing it as, as an exile of Israel in Babylon now, in captivity. Okay? And so he's seeing this, and he's seeing that they're, they're at the table. They're feasting. They're partying. They're living it up. They're, they're you know, we... You know, what is it? Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. That's how they're living it up right now. They have the table set before them, and they, 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 you know, they're just living it up without a care. You ever been somewhere, you're just living it up without a care, you're not thinking about anything, and then something happens, and all of a sudden there's a panic that comes up? It's usually at, at a family gathering, <laughs> and if you're any relative of my wife, it's a lot of family gatherings. <laughs> But you know what I'm talking about. You've been somewhere and everybody's just, it's joyful, it's happy. Maybe it's a birthday party. Maybe it's a, a family reunion. Maybe whatever it is, it's in a, a celebration. It's a feast. That's what they were doing. They weren't worried about what was going on on the outside of the gates. Okay, and, and, and Isaiah is seeing this. The Lord's giving him this vision that, hey, you're inside. You're in exile. But you're, he's actually like almost a part of the celebration too, though. Okay, because he's there, he's seeing it, he knows what's going on. He feels, he feels the everything of, of the partying and of the feasting, the joy, the amazement, the amusement, whatever it is, okay? So he's seeing that, and, but it talks about how he, they're, at the, he go, they're on the watchtower. Send them to the watchtower. You know, I should probably stick to my notes. How about if I try to do that? So when we're talking about Babylon, we're talking about, it, you know, it's kind of uh, the root there, kind of its uh, first appearance, we're talking about Babel. We know about the story. It's actually not Babel. It's Babel, if you want to say it right. That guy in blue letter Bible, he, he gives you pretty good pronunciations of words, so you could check him out. And I'm, we're saying Babel all the time, and he's like, it's actually Babel. It's actually like a B, a V sound for B. Um, and so what is, what is that talking about? It's talking about that means a confusion by mixing. Right, We know the story of the tower. They tried to build the tower. They tried to build it up to where, hey, we're going to reach up to the heavens. What were they, they were doing that in, in defiance towards God. Okay, They're doing that in defiance towards God, and God says, you know what? No, no, no. No, no, you're, gonna, you're not going to look at these people. They're working together. They're of one mind. They're of one accord. They're of one speech. They're of one language. So they were able to communicate easily with one another. Hey, yeah, you, you be the foreman. You be the laborer. You know, whatever you got to do in... You're the grunt, you're going to have to go take that wheel, you know, whatever with the wheelbarrow and this and that, and we're going to build this thing up, and we're going to build it up into the heavens. Okay, and so in studying all that, just talking about how they're doing that in defiance toward God. We, we want to do things, God didn't tell them to do that. That wasn't God's will for that tower to be built. It wasn't God's will for them to work like that together to do that. Although those of us as, as the body of Christ, we need to work together to build his kingdom. They were trying to build their own kingdom. And so the Lord and God said, you know what, enough of this. I'm going to confound them. I'm going to confuse them. 
by mixing up their languages. There's going to be different languages. They're not going to know what their neighbor next to them is talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Have you ever been somewhere? And well, I know down here you got a lot of Spanish. Have you ever been somewhere where people were talking back up home like Greek, Russian, Italian? You're getting to some places where your people are talking some stuff. You think there's a hit on your life. You're like, I don't know what you're saying. Especially, you know, how you've ever seen those mob movies back in the day and stuff, and now you start talking in Italian and stuff, and you're just like, you're trying to hear words like whack and <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, muscle, you know, stuff like that. You're just Jimmy Three Fingers. Uh, yeah, so you, you're, what are you talking about me? You know how with people you get to where different languages and you don't know what they're saying, and we always, because I worked in, uh, I lived in northern Ohio, and I worked up with some Amish people, and uh, so they talked, and it was, their language was Pennsylvania Dutch, and so they told me this was before Christ, they would tell me all the bad words, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but they'd be talking, and it was a lot of younger guys, too, I was my early 20s, and they were teenagers, they, they hired teenagers, 13-year-old, 15-year-old kids working with you, and uh, I gave some of them a ride home and stuff, too, because they didn't have cars. They had horse and buggy, and they, that wasn't going to get them home as quick as I could in my Chevy Blazer. So, they, <laughs> so I would give them a ride home, and then some of them would be talking. I'd be like, all right, in my vehicle, we're only speaking English. There's none of this Pennsylvania Dutch. You ain't talking about me when I'm doing a good deed giving you a ride home. <laughs> But anyways, when we, when, yeah, when we're, people are talking and you don't know what the language is, and we think that's the first thing we think, right? They're talking about me. But the, anyway, the Lord, so they tried to do this in defiance toward God, and God said, no, that's not happening. I'm going to put confusion in the camp. You're not going to understand what the other one's saying next to you. You're not going to be able to, now you're not going to be able to work together, okay? So the prophets describe Babylon as a, a city of pride and idolatry. It represents, like I said, a defiance toward God or a rejection of God. Yeah, let's cut it off again over here. So Revelation 17, 1 through 5 gives us a picture of, uh, you know, of what Babylon, and this is once again is the Amplified. Then one, one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and spoke with me saying, Come here, I will show you the judgment and the doom of the greater prostitute who is seated on many waters, influencing nations. She with whom the kings of the earth have committed acts of immorality and the inhabitants of the earth have become intoxicated with the wine of her immorality. Doesn't this kind of really explain the world we're living in today? People being intoxicated with the wine of the things of this world, of immorality, perversions, lusts, whatever it might be. And the angel carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was entirely covered with blasphemous names, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was dressed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold, precious stones and pearls. She was holding in her hand a gold cup of full of abominations and the filth of her sexual immorality. You know, when we look at the purple and the scarlet and the gold and the precious stones and pearls and you know we get caught up in that right we get caught up in that in this world we we you know and kind of what uh babylon is talking about we we have you know commercial babylon we have the spiritual babylon right and we 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 look at these things you know and it, it's we think of riches right we see oh look at she's adorned with the gold you know the the things of this world right the things that we 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 hold it so dearly here, right? S precious gold and, and silver and the stones and money, right? But what is the, the Bible talks about us being able to walk on streets of gold. Yes. To me, that's telling me, hey, don't wor be so worried about having riches here. Yes. Whenever he's paving streets with it, his streets in heaven are paved in gold. And we, we want to do whatever we can to get rich. We want to do whatever we can to get ahead of things. We had a Bible study at work on one of them teams meetings. They had another Bible study, and they were talking about, you know, how are we supposed to um, be Christ-like in the workplace and whatnot. And 
talking about our, our careers and this and that and how it could, we could get so caught up in our careers that that becomes our identity. And I'm like, well, you know, and I had so many things to say, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to hold my tongue in those, those little Bible studies because, like I said, they're, some of their beliefs, I don't have the same belief. And I feel like I might be the only apostolic that's calling into that, and they might block me <laughs> if I start really saying what some of the things I'd like to share with them. But I do, I do get in some time to where I can say a few things that uh, I try to rein it in a little bit, you know, because I don't want to be, I don't want to be an offense. I want to be like we're learning here. I, I want to about forgiveness and repentance and this, those things, but I don't want to be an offense purposely to somebody. I want to be, what is he saying? We need to be the peacemakers. We need to be peacemakers. And like I said, I don't want to be an offense, even though that's just going to give somebody else an opportunity for God's grace and mercy to be at work in their lives to forgive. But that doesn't mean that I need to go through life being an offense on purpose to people. Amen? Um, <laughs> even though sometimes that's what we want to do. We do get that. We do get that little itch in us, right, to where we're like, you know what? I feel like being an offense to somebody today. I really feel like offending somebody. I feel like hurting somebody's feelings. I'm the only one. Um, no. <laughs> we got the wave going on in the back. Um, but that's not what we're supposed to do. So like I said, Isaiah was having a vision of Babylon with a table set before them. They were eating and drinking with a time of feasting. The prophet was seeing himself, seeing this as himself was in exile in Babylon, and now he has become overcome with anguish. He's been seized with pains like the pains of a woman in childbirth. He was bent and twisted with pain. He was alarmed and disturbed at the sight of it, Babylon being overthrown. Okay, so he's going through this because he sees what's about to take place. He sees the enemy camp is pushing against them. And so he's feeling the anguish. He's feeling the pain. Babylon is now being uh, paid back is what's taking place. One commentator wrote, and I believe this was Matthew Henry. You'll like his, his English wording of all these things. Um, <laughs> this wasn't me. It was the, Matthew Henry. He said, the Persians shall pay the Babylonians in their own coin. I got to see them with like a pipe. They shall pay them with their own coin. Those that, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Those that pay, or those that by fraud and violence, cheating and plundering, unrighteous wars and deceitful treaties have made a prey of their neighbors, shall meet with their match, and by the same methods shall they themselves be made a prey of. Okay, so see, the Lord uses different things for punishment. The children of Israel were exiled to Babylon, and it was for punishment. For punishment, okay? The, Lord's, the Lord uses different things for his tool for some things to come to pass, for his will to be done, right? So he, I, now in reading some of this and studying and looking at a bunch of different things, some of the things that I gathered were that even in the Lord's choosing of these other uh, armies or kingdoms or, what, or kings or, or evil to 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 bring towards the children of Israel to where they are exiled now. They're in another, they're in captivity, okay, to where, but the Lord's plan was to where, okay, Babylon, you didn't, you weren't as easy on them as I was planning you to be on them. You were a little bit more harsh on them than what I had intended for you to be to them, okay? And that's why we see that Babylon is getting paid back, and they're getting paid back. Look, we're, we're uh, those that, uh, what did it say, the, Treacherer deals treacherously. The destroyer, he deals, he, or whatever. I'm, I'm up here spitting words out. I can't even say what I'm saying. I'm trying to say. They shall pay the Babylonians in their own coin that the fraud and violence, cheating and plundering, unrighteous wars and deceitful treaties. See, it's like they weren't even playing with the guidelines that the Lord had set up. Even though they were used as a tool to put his, his per chosen into captivity. It was like they stepped out of bounds. Okay, and the Lord's like, hey, you know what? Now, 
You've dealt with some of these other people treacherously. You've dealt with these other people so wickedly and so evilly. Now it's time for you to get payback. And so they're sitting here at this banquet. They're feasting, right? And Isaiah's having this vision, and the Lord's showing them that the enemy camps. There's more than one camp coming down upon Babylon. And they're inside their walls. They don't know what's going on. They're not worried about that. And so remember that, like I said, that he's seeing himself as one exiled. He's one seeing one that has been removed by force from their homeland as a, as a form of divine punishment or redemption. He is seeing that his captors are about to be overthrown and his night of pleasure, this night of pleasure that they're all experiencing, as the Bible describes as he is now seeing things from the perspective of the king that is about to be overthrown. So he's, he's in this one, that's where this word, it kind of switches so quick. To where you're like, well, what, this, it's not, I'm not making sense of this, okay? And maybe, maybe you do. I, I'm just trying to show you where I was kind of like lacking, I guess. Until you, you look at other things and you, you get other Bible references and you look at other scriptures that tie into the, these scriptures that you're looking up and studying and going about, right? That's, I don't know, that's how I do it. <laughs> trying to get a better understanding of what's going on. And so he's seeing this as one who's at the feast, He's seeing this as one who's there, and then all of a sudden it switches to where now he's got almost like the king's perspective, and he sees now that the enemy's camps are coming and trying to overthrow them. And that's where he comes in, and he's like, now there's a change in the air from feasting to get someone in the watchtower quickly. Get someone to the watchtower. We have been so caught up in the party and carrying on without a care. Get to the tower. Anoint the shield. Prepare for battle. The Lord has told Isaiah to set a watchman, but the word says that Isaiah himself, instead of setting the watchman, that he's chosen to be the watchman himself in the tower. And he's, gonna, he's supposed to declare, the watchman's supposed to declare what he sees. And so he's talking about anoint the shield. We, 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 we've heard about that before. You know, the anointing, when you anoint that shield, it's a smearing in. You know, if we, got, we come up here and get prayed for, we don't smear. I think maybe we should start. <laughs> because those grapes, to get, that, to, get, to get that anointing oil, there's a breaking There's a crushing. There's a pulverizing. There's a, there's a pushing down. There is a constant to try to, yeah, pressure to get that oil from that olive, amen? And so when we're talking about the anoint the shield, they're anointing the shield, they're rubbing it in, because most of the shield it had leather on there, right? So they're trying to make it supple. They're trying to make it to where the enemy's blows could just glance off of it. The enemy's darts, that if I have my shield of faith and I've got fresh anointing, the enemy's darts, they're just going to glance off. I'm just going to be able to stand in my faith in God and trust in God. You know what? I'm going to stand here in my faith in God. I'm going to believe, Father, that you are my protection, that you are my shield. And that's anointing that you've got me covered in, this, this breaking, because that's what that anointing, we've got to go through a breaking. We, we pray for the anointing. Lord, I want that anointing that comes from you. I want that anointing that comes from the throne of grace. And he's like, okay, here it comes. Here comes attack. Here comes attack. Here comes attack. Here comes sickness. Here comes disease. Here comes whatever it might be. Weariness and fatigue. And the Lord's like, okay, let's see how bad you want this anointing. It's time for the, 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 the fruit if I could say like the olive, it's time for, here, we're the olive, and we're, how's that anointing flow? But when we get broken, we don't have, there, that anointing's not going to flow unless I'm broken, unless I humble myself before God, right? Amen. I'm saying, Lord, I'm trusting in you. I cast my cares upon you, Lord. I'm praying for the, the healing. I'm praying for the deliverance, Lord. But you know what? Not by might, not by power, but by your spirit only, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And I receive this, whatever you're trying to do to break me down. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, so that I can break down, so that I can have victory over flesh, and so that I can overcome the things, my desire, so that I can have victory over my will. Will and let your will be done. 
And that my faith, that anointing, that fresh anointing on that shield, so that my faith would not fail, so that my faith would not waver, no matter what kind of dart the enemy wants to send my way. Did you ever see those little tiny darts? <laughs> those little blow darts? <laughs> and I'll, you know, hey, what's on this little tiny little thing? You're like, oh. And then you ever see those big ones they shoot with like out of a catapult thing that's got flames on it? But it looks like a huge dart, huge arrow. I remember when we were kids, we used to throw, I don't know why I'm telling you. <laughs> we used to throw darts at the one tree. We had a, a pine tree that was, didn't have any branches until it got you know, way up there. We'd throw you know, darts at the tree. For some reason, this neighbor kid just walked in front of him and stood in the tree. And my sister just threw a dart and hit him right in the neck. <laughs> Kristen. No, Nikki wasn't. She wasn't even in the picture yet. Everybody said Nikki. <laughs> no, it was Kristen. And he just stood there with his dart sticking out of his neck. And we were little kids, so we're just like, what is going on here? <laughs> why did you do that? And he, I think he, like, ran home with a dart sticking out of his That's why I think we were kind of labeled after that as the troublemakers in the neighborhood. <laughs> they throw darts at people. <laughs> Stay away. But anyway, you know what I'm talking about. When things just seems like everything is just being fired our way. And we've got to say, you know what, Lord, this is just an opportunity. Amen. This is just an opportunity. This is not that God is trying to punish me for something. Not that he's, maybe he is trying to correct me of something. But you know what, once again, it doesn't matter what it is, Father. If this is your will, that these darts are flying at me like this in such an array that I don't even feel like I could catch my breath. Right? Because sometimes what is it? I need to be on my face constantly. We've been in those seasons. Been in those seasons. And then sometimes the seasons where you feel like you don't get attacked at all. Then there's seasons where you feel like you're just getting blessing, like people are just walking up to you, handing money to you. Then it feels like you're in another season where people are walking up to you and taking from you. It happens like that. But you know what? Like I think you said it. He's in control of the seasons too, whether physically or spiritually. He's the one. There is no mother nature. There is no father time. There, mother nature, no. My God is the one who sets everything in order. My God is the one who says, hey, your season of want is going to be right now. And it's going to be this long. Your season of blessing is going to be this long. Just like they had a season of famine. They had a season of plenty. We read these things, but then it happens in our lives, and we want to forget about the Lord already giving us examples about things to prepare us. Hey, this might happen in your walk. Anoint the shield. Get to the watchtower. The enemy camp might be pursuing. Oh, why would, the why would you allow the enemy camp to pursue us now, Lord? We're in a time of fasting. We're in a time of feasting. We're in a time of reveling. We're in a time where I'm on them. Finally got to the mountaintop, and I feel like I'm rejoicing over some things that's been happening in my life, and now you're allowing the enemy to come. It's life. It's life, and if it's going to, that's what it's got to be to keep me broken so there can be a continuous flow of his anointing from the throne of grace, then the Lord signed me up. I want to be all in it. I want to be a part of it. I've got to be in your will because there's no better place but to be than the will of God because if I choose to step out of that, then trust me, the attacks are going to be more frequent and they're going to be worse than I could ever deal with. Or he might just say, you know what, I choose to just... Let you go completely and think that everything's okay. Then that's a real dangerous place to be too. Praise God. I'm sorry. So what I gathered all of this was from all of that to get to where I'm in the shower. Not right now. And I have to get out real quick and go jot some things down because this is where I feel like the meat and the potatoes of what God is really trying to express after all of that. Isaiah is seeing this vision. He's seeing this vision of Babylon falling. 
Babylon's going to fall. He's, he's seeing it as he's there. He's in the midst of it. He's seeing it from a perspective of a captive of Israel in the Babylon camp as one of their captives. He's seeing it as the king of being, you know what? Oh, hey, we're about to be overthrown. What have we done? We see the Medes. We see the, uh, forget the Elam. Uh, you know, we see them coming to take us over. Some to the watchtower. Anoint the shield. Get to the watchtower. We want to hear. We want to hear. Tell us what you see. And so, what the Lord has shared with me is where we're going to start seeing these things falling around us. We're going to see world religions fall around us. We're going to see financial kingdoms fall around us. And He's telling us to get to our watchtower. Anoint your shield. Tell us what you see. I see a wave of the enemy over here. And if we're the body of believers and we, you can't get to your watchtower tonight. I'm not telling you to do that. I'm telling you when we get to our home or wherever our prayer, prayer closet, we all have a prayer closet. That special place. You know mine is the actual closet. I've shared that many a times. It's because it's dark, it's, it's secluded, it's away from everything else to where I get, I'm like, I get into that secret place with me and the Lord, okay? So when you get to your secret place, your, your instruction is to get to your watchtower and tell the Lord, I'm posted at my watchtower. I'm going to be able to declare what I see. And Lord, by your, by my fresh anointing, that anoint, I've, got my, I've got my shield anointed, Father. I'm ready for the battle, but you know what? I'm ready to eat. I'm ready to see what's coming our way first. And it, and it talked about the Babylonian wall, that, that wall that was around the camp, that wall that was around their kingdom to where they had many watchtowers. And what they did on these watchtowers, if, you, if somebody over here, I don't know how far away they were, but that's why we got to be united together in one mind and one accord. We got to be united in spirit to where when, when I'm in my prayer closet, when I'm in my watchtower, and I come and I gather, or I send a text, or I call and say, hey, I feel a wave of infirmity coming over here. I'm yelling out to that other side over here to the next person in the next watchtower over. I feel a wave of infirmity, and they stay out. They holler back. We got that covered. We cover the infirmity right now, and we lose the healing, but we've got a wave. We've got a wave of, of, of immorality coming, sexual immorality. I been feeling that and seeing that in my watchtower and we take it and we pass it on to each command post we take it and pass it on to each tower to where we can get and gather and surround everything with prayer I see a wave of infirmity we could or you know personally okay lately I told my wife this week I don't know what it was a couple last week or the week before I'm in I'm like and it really hits me like enough if I'm working from home for the day. And, you know, it, it, I think it actually started when Bree might not even have been home to where I'd, I'd be in the house and it would happen on the weekend sometimes too. I'm walking through the house and I do the dad thing now. I look at all the windows and I stand there and I'm looking out the windows and stuff. And, <laughs> and uh, But seriously, I, and so I'll be walking around the house and this and that, and there's this, there's this thing that comes over me, and I'm like, Lord, I don't know what this is. And as I'm, at first I was like, Lord, is this a, am, I try, am I feeling depression? I'm like, well, I'm not taking ownership of this. I just want to know what this is, Lord. I want to know what to pray. I want to know how to go about this. I want to know how to have victory over this. I want to know who it is I need to pray for. Or what situation I need to pray for. I was, you know, I'm, I'm feeling this, but I'm, but I'm not taking ownership because I'm like, this isn't me. What is it, Lord? And I, I'm like, is, it, it almost felt like a, a, a heaviness, but it wasn't depression. And that's where it's in the shower and the Lord, boom. You're dealing with a longing. And I was like, what do you mean I'm dealing with a longing? He said, you long, he so tokoyata. It was a longing of how things used to be. How things used to be 
like back home with family and we're gatherings, family gatherings, and everybody, you know, we'd be together and this and that. And even before that, when people, when everybody was in church, family, all our family was in church. And the Lord said, you know, you're just, you're, it's a feeling, a longing that you want, you long for those things of yesterday. Family dinners, spaghetti at my mom's. Oy vey, oh. <laughs> And I'm like, Lord, uh, so, and he said, it, there's a temptation with that, though. He was like, there's a temptation that comes with that. And if we, and this is for me, I don't know what, if anybody else has been dealing with anything like this, or you just don't know what I'm even talking about right now. <laughs> but he says, there's a temptation that comes with that longing to where that temptation, if it festers and builds too much, that it can drag you away outside of the will of God. Because we're here for a reason. We're here in the will of God. But my family, and some of us got family that's far away. It's hours in the car <laughs> that are horrible. Or it's a lot of money to buy a plane ticket. And it's just like the Lord was like, this longing that you're feeling. Because I'm walking around the house, and I'm just, I'm looking out windows. I'm trying to, trying to pray. I'm trying to read, and I can't get rid of it. I can't lose it. And I, then I just keep remembering all these things. And I don't know, maybe it's because I'm getting older, too. And I'm just, I don't know. And, you know, we see, I see my nieces and nephews growing up, and I don't get to be a part of their lives and this and that. And, but you know what? It's better to be in God's will. And to miss all of that to where, where I can get a text to where people are like, hey, we watched you preach, preach. And then we hear, and then we hear the word of the Lord come across and he's talking about bringing backsliders home and bringing the prodigals home and this and that. And, and if I have to be, if we have to be so far away from other things but know that we're in the will of God here, where we are right now, physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally. I believe that we are in the perfect will of God where God has us right now. And the thing is, but if I long for things of yesterday, if I long for those things of yesterday, and I'm, ta I'm talking, this is, I'm talking about family, but I'm talking about, I could even long for things of yesterday spiritually. To where, oh, hey, I remember when this place was packed out, and I remember we were doing this, and I remember we were. I could long for those days, and it, longing is going to cause me to have temptation to be drawn and pulled out of the will of God. When he says, I have you where you are for a specific reason, for a specific time, for a specific season, for a specific purpose. And I don't want to be pulled out of the will of God. But I believe, I know that our call for right now is to when we get to our next appointment, our next opportunity to be in our prayer closet, that we don't check in, but we are kind of checking in by saying, Lord, I'm at my watchtower. I have, I've come here with my shield anointed. And I'm ready to declare, I'm ready to tell everything that I see, and I want you to let me see and feel every wave of attack. I want you, not that I take ownership of it, Father, but that you give me your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of what the church is being attacked with, what our pastors are being attacked with, what my brothers and sisters in the Lord might be in attacked with, or whether they're dealing with something that I can pray for to where we shout to the watchtower over and say, hey, I'm at my post, brother, or I see you over there I see a light over at your watchtower too hey here's what I'm seeing what are you seeing over there let's bind together and let's overcome this thing in prayer let's have victory over this thing together as we stand on our watchtowers and remember just as the prophet Isaiah the Lord was allowing him to have a vision to where he was seeing it from so many different perspectives he was seeing it as a child of Israel, right, being exiled. To where, you know what, it's very, it'd be very easy to take that ownership of that. You know what, I'm bound up in this prison of depression. 
I could get bound up in this longing, this desire to, for the things of yesterday. <laughs> so like I said, so we, we're, we don't, we, we're not going to confess it here tonight to where Lord, I'm in my, because you're not in your watchtower here. I'm talking about when we get into that secret place of prayer and we're going to say, I don't know, that's where the Lord speaks to me most of the time. Okay, we come here, the Lord speaks to me when I'm here and stuff too, but when I'm in that time of that secret place, there's like no other. <laughs> Praise God. I hope this was okay, and I hope you under, kind of understand what I was trying to convey. I know it was kind of squirrely at the beginning. <laughs> it was kind of mishmash, hodgepodge put together. But if it's okay with you tonight, if we could just do this one thing to where, I don't know if you remember a few Sundays ago, we just kind of just gave the Lord a wave offering. If we could just do that tonight and just kind of give the Lord a wave offering. If it's okay, if you can stand to your feet, if we could do that tonight and just, just give the Lord a wave offering tonight. Lord, I just want to give you thanks, Lord. I want to surrender all to you, Lord. I want to yield all to you. I want to humble myself before you tonight, Lord. I want to give all of these things, all of these blessings. I give these things to you, Lord. I give you my wife and my kids. I give you our home and our cars right now. I give you my job and our finances, Father. I give these things unto you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. These are your things first, Father. You have just allowed us to hold on to these things while we're here, Father. I want to bless you tonight, Lord. I want to exalt you. I want to magnify your wonderful name tonight, Lord. And I pray, Father, that you would help us to have understanding, help us to have revelation, Lord, of the, in the name of Jesus. Lord, and I pray that we would draw close to you and that we would choose to know you better in the wonderful name of Jesus. And, Lord, that when we get to that watchtower, when we get to that place of prayer, Lord, that we would check in with you, Father, and that we would decree it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless y'all. God love y'all. And just... Be ready to share some of those things. I'm serious. We gotta, we're, on the, we're in the watchtowers together, helping each other out, looking out for each other. Amen? God bless y'all. Love y'all. See y'all. I might actually get to be here Sunday. I don't think one of the plants shut down. I might actually be able to come Sunday. So.